Hey, what's up? This is Phil Ebener with VideoSchoolOnline.com bringing you another cool After Effects tutorial. Today we are recreating a project requested by Motashim. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, uh, but Motashim, he requested this cool After Effects project called Storytime. Let me play a little bit of it for you. So basically it's this folder text, uh, folder, folded paper texture and the camera is kind of zooming around it and different photos are dissolving onto the paper. And so it's actually not too difficult to do. Um, so let me get straight into it. So first you're going to need to download this paper texture. I'm just using this one that I found searching in Google. So just find something like this. If you search for folded paper texture, you'll find something like this from cartographersguild.com. And then you'll also need four pictures. I'm using four pictures um, th from a my photo colorizations that I'm doing. I also have a course in photo colorization if you're interested in that. But let me just play through what I created. So I did this in about 15 minutes. So it, to be honest, it's not uh, as high quality as this project, but this probably took whoever created it a few hours. And this with tweaking, uh, with expansion could be just as good, but this is base the basic. I'm teaching you the basics of it um, so, so that you can take it and run with it. So let me just play through it. So we have these pictures zooming around and fading on and you get the idea it's basically the same thing. Uh, so it starts with the logo in the center and then photos kind of zoom in. So let's get straight to it and recreate this. So I'm going to put all these files into another folder and I'll try to upload this this project file somewhere so that you guys can download it as well. Um, so put all these pictures in our project and I'm just gonna start from scratch okay so basically what you do to start out with is create a new composition I'm just gonna do 12 1280 by 720 2997 frame rate 15 seconds that should be good ultimately um, you would want to do something bigger so something like uh, 1920 by 1080 which is full HD. This is HD, but not as good quality. Uh, but just for training purposes, this will be easier and it will render faster. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to take our paper texture and just drop it in our composition and decrease the size. I'm gonna rotate it the right way. So ro rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm pressing S to bring up scale and R to bring up rotation. And now just kind of plug it into this composition. Okay. So now, and you can press option question mark to uh, fill the composition in full screen. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is uh, start building our different elements. Actually, first we can create sort of that little intro logo at the start in the center. I'm just going to do something simple, just create a shape, center it using the align feature if you don't see that go to window window and align and center then I'm just gonna change the opacity blend mode of this shape layer to something like overlay I can toggle through them by going pressing shift up maybe something like vivid light and then bring down the opacity or something to like 40 that's semi-interesting. I'm going to make this size a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to, and I can make this 100% so it looks a little better. Then I'm just going to add some text, story time. I use this font that I've downloaded from dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com, and that is KR Graft font. Looks kind of cool. And I'm just going to pre-comp these, so Command-Shift-C to pre-comp. I'm just going to call this logo. You can see that it changes blend uh, the style once I do that. So I'm just going to toggle through these blend modes until I find one I like. Okay, color burn, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I want to create a, another, a new composition which will, 
will be where we create our put our photos. So this one, I want it to be. I'm I'm dividing this paper into qu quarters. So one, two, three, four. So the width has to be how big? Half the distance of 1280. So an easy way to do that is just do 1280 divided by two and click off to the side and it does it automatically. So you don't have to do the math if you're not good at math. So that's pretty cool. So I do that for both width and height. And I click OK. Then I take my photo, drop it in. See these photos are really big so for these small compositions like 640 by 360 you're gonna have to decrease the size. So you really don't need to use huge photos for this. Okay so then uh, what I'm going to do and I'm gonna recall call this comp photo just so I can or photo one so I can differentiate them and then we're gonna create that sort of fade on that is happening here in this story time project so let's see kind of it fades on from the center and it's these photos are very feathered around the edges so we want to create a custom kind of feathering feathering so let's zoom in a little bit I guess we'll stick it there so to create this custom feathering we're gonna take our pen tool and with our photo selected, we're just going to click and drag and create a custom sort of shape, a custom mask around our photo. So connect the dots and then press MM a couple times to bring up the mask properties. First, I'm going to change mask feather to 300. Then I'm going to decrease the mask expansion to something like negative 110 or so. Okay, so this is going to be the final look of this photo. So I'm going to go to like something like three seconds and set a keyframe for mask expansion. And then I'm going to go to zero seconds and decrease the mask expansion to something like this. We don't want it all the way expanded or unexpanded. Um, uh, and then we're going to create an opacity fade to make sure that this fades on uh, properly. So I set a keyframe there at 100. I'm just going to drag it to about one second and then drag the opacity down to zero. So now we have it fading on and expanding at the same time. I can select these and easy ease them and basically do that and it kind of fades on. Okay, so then what you do back in your main comp, you're going to take this photo and drag it into one of the quadrants. Okay, so now if you see, it can it fades on. Got it. Okay, so basically what you're going to do then is duplicate this photo template or comp, rename it to photo two or whatever it is, and then you're going to redo all the steps I just did. And you can't just copy and paste this mask unless all of your photos are the same size. But what you're going to have to do is drag your photo on, you know, resize it, frame it properly, go through all the steps, set the mask, and then do it at the same si timing. But I'm not going to do that in this, this tutorial because I don't want to waste your time. So what I'm going to basically do is pretend that I have already done that and I'm just going to use this photo too. Actually, yeah, I guess I can use the ones that I already did, so I'm not pretending and just show you how to do it. So now I'm just pasting or putting my different photos in different quadrants. Got it. So something like that. And I can put it all be beneath the logo. How about? Okay. So now we just have to create this sort of camera movement. Well, actually, first what we have to do is make sure that they fade on at different times. So around two seconds, the first one's going to start fading on. When that one's done fading on, the second photo fades on. So I'm just dragging these layers out. And so just make sure that they are staggered. So something like this. OK, so as you see that, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to make my composition quarter quality just so it renders faster. So sorry it's, it's blurry, but um, it'll just help it render faster for now. So then what I'm going to do is make all of these layers 3D. 
So under this cube, select that option. And then I'm going to add my camera. So go up to Layer, New, Camera. Just press Enter for these camera settings, so that's fine. And then you want to go up again to the Layer, New, Null Object. Make this Null Object 3D and then parent the camera to the null object. I'm sorry I'm going really fast, but I just want to get through this. It's already been 10 minutes, so I don't want to bore you. So if you're having trouble staying with me, um, well, please just let me know in the comments below if I am going too fast. Otherwise, um, I'm teaching this tutorial as if you know a little bit about After Effects already. So if you don't know anything I'm doing right now, please uh, check out my After Effects complete course which goes through all the beginning uh, beginner things getting started with After Effects and you can check that out at videoschoolonline.com so sorry for that pitch everyone but let's get straight back to it so now that you have your null and camera layers you can play around with the null and see what it does so if you play around with the position or rotation you can see that it moves, changes the comp and you can create these sort of interesting camera moves. So we're going to first just play with position and rotation. So first we're going to just create sort of a zoom in to this or a zoom out of the story time maybe. Um, or maybe a zoom in. So maybe we'll start something like right here in position. So set a keyframe right there and then go forward to right before, a little bit before this starts to fade on and zoom in right there. And then we're going to press R to bring up our rotation and just set a keyframe right there because that's what we want the rotation to be at this point in time. And then select your position keyframes and right click it and then, then just click keyform, keyframe interpolation and change it to linear. This just makes it not wacky in the future <laughs> so just do that. Um, so if you're getting some weird moves make sure you check that. So now it zooms in and then it's going to go over to this photo of Lou Gehrig. So what we can do is just, you know, change a little bit of these rotation properties, something like this. So just rotate it a little bit and then with position, recenter it to where this photo is. Okay, so it's not, it takes a little bit of practice to like figure out which setting over here you have to play with to get to the right one and then this motion is too long so I'm just gonna drag all these keyframes over to the left and I'm gonna select them all and do easy ease them so function F9 on a Mac or just F9 or right click and keyframe easy ease so now if I render this out you can see it zooms in and then it goes to this photo so that's a pretty nice move already. But you'll notice in the original composition, there's still sort of some motion as it, it fades on. So I'm just going to go in, and then for each of these, I'm just going to play with one of these, one of these, uh, one of these properties. So for this one, I'll just do Z rotation. So now you'll see that if I render it out and play it, it does the first move and then it continues to move and that kind of might be a little too much of a move so may I'll just do a little bit less okay so now for our next photo before it pops up first I want to set keyframes for all of these right here so this is the starting point and then go ahead and let's see we're going to I guess this is our, our second photo that is going, the one that's in the top right. And I'm just going to play around, just move these the rotation, move the, the position so that it is looks good. And so something like this. So now it flies over to this photo as it fades on. Okay. So if I render out, play it, first Lou Gehrig, and then it goes over there, all right? And then same thing, just set a keyframe for all of these position, these functions, uh, properties over here, and then go forward as it fades on, and just play with one of these. So maybe we'll zoom out a little bit. 
but you'll see as I zoom out, you get this black over here, which is not in the, there's nothing there. Uh, so just make sure that you don't get that, or if you do see that, play with an another one of these properties so that the black on the edges goes away. So now it kind of goes like that. All right, so you basically just keep doing this, fly this null object around or the camera and uh, get to all your photos and that's basically how you create this composition. Okay, so I hope that sort of is a good representation of how to recreate this story time After Effects project. You can see here it's basically the same thing that I'm doing. The motion is pretty much the same um, and you just have to play around with the different transitions from one photo to the next so you can see and you know you see text here and different things well you can add text to your photos so for example say I want to add text then I add text you know I call this Lou Gehrig and I change the font to something that's uh, readable so something like I don't know something like that well then you're gonna also have to create a fade on for this I'm just gonna create a quick opacity fade but you can do all sorts of different fades with different masks like we did and so now if we go come back to our main comp you see that the Lou Gehrig fades on with our our photo and so within each of these photo compositions you can add whatever you want be it text or other motion graphics or or anything really okay so I hope that makes sense and um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment um, or wherever you're watching this you can always connect with me at videoschoolonline.com check out my courses there you can you know learn how to do photo colorizations this entire um, project all these photos are actually black and white photos that I colorized in Photoshop and you can learn how to do that on videoschoolonline.com or you can learn more After Effects uh, stuff awesome tricks and tips I have a full-blown course on basics After Effects I have advanced courses on motion graphics including lower thirds uh, shape layers you name it I've got a class on it so check those out at videoschoolonline.com and always, as always, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.